Dynamic account ranges is a new feature in Sage Intelligence Reporting, and you may be wondering what it is. So let's start off by explaining it in a conceptual way. When designing a report, imagine that you could enter an account rule like a range, define how you would like your account rows to look, click a button, and your report updates with all the accounts in the range. This is what a dynamic range does. There are a number of benefits to using them. First, they will save you time in that if you have a lot of account rows to enter, you only have to define the first one, and the rest will be added for you. They also provide convenience since they only have to be set up once and will allow your reports to be kept up to date. Reports are kept up to date because any new accounts added to your general ledger are automatically included in your layouts after a report is run out and the dynamic ranges in it refreshed. Dynamic ranges don't only work with account ranges. Wildcards and mathematical functions can also be used as well as account filters like category codes and group codes. Lastly, they include the option to exclude zero rows, making your reports more compact and presentable. In this video, we'll introduce you to this powerful tool, show you how to create your own, and share a few tips with you as well. We'll first create one using an account range to show you the basic principles, and then show the difference in adding one that uses an account category filter. When creating dynamic ranges, we follow a basic process which includes defining your template row, setting up your dynamic range, and then refreshing it. Some of these terms may sound strange to you right now, but we'll be sure to explain them as we go along. Dynamic ranges are accessed from the report designer. I've run out a copy of the designer, opened a blank worksheet, and added some high-level information. This will serve as our canvas for setting up our first one. I've added the report headings to create clarity, and because this is what you would normally do when building a complete layout. I have also included the account range 2000 to 2999, as these are the accounts I would like my dynamic range to include. The column headings will make things easier to follow when we enter what we call our template row. A template row is a single account row that defines how we want all of our account rows to look. As you can see, it will include an account number, description, and opening balance for the given year. This is our first step. Let's add it. For the account, I'm going to enter 2000, as this is the first one in my range. It's not actually necessary to enter the account, but for now we'll include it as it makes things easier to understand. For the description, I'm going to use the New Account Description formula, which can be found in the Formulas tab. After dragging it into the Description field, you'll see it says Account is Required, and means that you'll need to edit some of the arguments for it. You can do this either by typing them into the formula bar or by using the Function Arguments window. I'm going to use the Function Arguments window, which I can access by making sure my formula is selected and clicking the FX button. For the company, I'm going to select the one listed in the report headings and use the F4 key on my keyboard to absolute reference the cell. For the account, I need to select the one from my template row. I also only need to absolute reference the column as when my dynamic range expands, the formula will be copied down and will need to reference the account for its respective row. I can now close the window. If the account referenced actually exists, then a description will be returned for it. I'm now going to add my opening balance. You'll notice that I've left an empty column between the account description and the opening balance formula. This is just to show you that you can have spaces in your template row. We can now configure the arguments for the formula. Once again, I'm going to use the function arguments window. We need to include at least the account, company, and year. So for the account, I'm going to select it again from my template row, and as before, absolute reference the column. For the company and year, I'm going to select these from the report headings and absolute reference the cells. Depending on your integration, you may also need the currency code, so I'm going to select it as well. We're now done creating our template row and can move on to the next step, but just before we do so, there are two things to remember. One is that your template row needs to be defined as a typical account row that you would normally create in a layout. And so any formulas you include need to reference the relevant cells, whether that's in the template row or elsewhere in your worksheet. 
The second is that your template row needs to include at least one financial formula. This is because the dynamic range depends on some of the arguments in it. Let's set up our dynamic range. There are a few ways to do this and we'll cover them in a separate video. But for now, let's use the most straightforward one, which is the Setup option in the Tools tab. By clicking the Setup button, you are provided with a dialog which will guide you through the different steps and be required to enter three bits of information. The first is your template row. The second is your account column. And the third is your account rule. So for the first, I'm going to click the Selection button next to the field and select the entire template row from my sheet. You'll see that this is first added to a Select Range dialog box, and you can then click OK to add it to your setup. Do the same for your accounts list, but this time you need to select the entire column that is going to contain your accounts. You can do this by clicking the label at the top of the field. Once again, click OK to save this information. One thing you'll notice is that each time you make your selection, Sage Intelligence automatically adds the necessary referencing so you don't have to worry about these details. Lastly, click the Selection button and now select the cell that contains your account rule and then click OK. As mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of dynamic ranges is that you can exclude rows that have zero balances. If you'd like to do this, then check the box and click Next. The dynamic range actually gets saved as a Sage Intelligence formula, which needs to be stored in one of the cells in your worksheet. You can place this anywhere, but it's a good idea to put it somewhere where it won't get overwritten when your account rows are expanded. I'm going to place mine to the left of my column headings. So, once again, click the Selection button, choose the cell where you'd like your dynamic range to be saved, click OK, and then click Finish. Your dynamic range is now set up. If you were designing a complete layout, then you would probably start on your next one. But we're just going to refresh this one to see how the rows get updated. This is our last step. The Refresh button is also found in the Tools tab. When it is clicked, all dynamic ranges in the current sheet are refreshed. If successful, a task pane notification will appear confirming that. If something wasn't set up properly and the dynamic range doesn't refresh correctly, a notification will also appear indicating where the problem may lie. Assume now that you want to make a change to a dynamic range. You can do this by selecting the formula and editing its arguments in either the formula bar or by using the function arguments window. As an example, since we didn't check exclude zero rows during our setup, we can edit the formula to include it. By clicking the refresh button again, you can see that all rows with zero balances have been removed. Let's now take a look at an example that makes use of an account filter. I have refreshed my canvas and you'll notice that I've changed my account rule to a category code. We'll follow our usual process of creating a template row, setting up our dynamic range, and then refreshing it. I'm going to create my template row in the same way that I did before, but this time I'm not going to enter an account. This may seem strange at the moment, but once the dynamic range is refreshed, we'll see that everything updates correctly. When I add the account description, even though I haven't entered an account, I still need to reference its cell as that is where the account will end up. Because there is no account at the moment, when I click OK to close the Function Arguments window, the formula reads, Account is required. Now, when I add my opening balance, things are a little different. I still need to reference all the cells that I did the last time, but I also need to include the category code as an argument as well. This is important because Sage Intelligence will use the category code, as well as any other filters, to determine what accounts to include in the dynamic range. Once finished, I can go to my setup. Adding the template row and the account column is done in the same way as in the previous example, but things change when adding the account rule. If you hover over the Selection button, you'll see it says, Selecting an account rule is only needed when creating your dynamic range at a GL account level. This means that if you're not using a range, wildcard, or mathematical function, then you can leave this field blank. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next, select where I'd like my dynamic range to be saved, and complete my setup.
Once I click Refresh, the range will update with all the accounts in the category. We're now going to look at one last scenario. I have created a report that uses dynamic ranges and have run it out from the Report Manager. Before I ran it out, I added some accounts to my general ledger. Now to include these new accounts in my layout, all I have to do is click the Refresh button and they will be added. It is recommended that you refresh your dynamic ranges each time you run out a report as this will keep them in sync with any changes made to your general ledger. In upcoming videos, we'll look at the different ways that you can set up your dynamic ranges. We'll also show you how to create a complete layout as well as how to update an existing one using them. To view other videos in this series, go to youtube.com forward slash Sage Intelligence. Also, connect with us at sageintelligence.com and sageintelligencecommunity.com or view our online courses at sageintelligenceacademy.com. Lastly, we love feedback, so if you found this video useful, please like it and share it on your social media channels.